Have you ever heard of open collector or open drain outputs? What is an open collector output? How it works? What is advantages of open collector outputs compared to ordinary TTL outputs? What is its disadvantages? What is difference between open collector and open drain outputs? What is difference between sinking open collector and sourcing open collectors? In this video, you will get answers for these questions. Watching this video will help you to better understand protocols like I2C, which have open collector outputs. Please stay with me in the rest of this video. ICs have terminals. Some of the terminals are for special purpose. For example, VCC and ground, which are used for powering up the IC. Some others are inputs to IC and some others are outputs. You may have heard of several output types, relay output, triac output, transistor output, TTL output, analog output, you name it. These are output types available in industrial devices like PLCs. In this video, I'm going to consider a special type of output terminals named open collector, sometimes open drain. This is a relay, an electromechanical switch. It can switch AC, DC or even analog or digital signals. This one is a triac. It can switch AC and this one is a transistor which it can switch DC. If there were a relay on electronic device output, it's a relay output. If there were a triac, it's a triac output. And if there were a single transistor, it's a transistor output and if the output of the device has two active states for example 0 and 5 volts we call it TTL usually TTL outputs are made of multiple transistors relay and triac outputs are not subject of this video because they are used in industrial devices not electronics if you are interested in relay triac and much more other switches you can watch this video there is a link to that video in the description. These are transistor outputs and these are TTL outputs. These are called transistor output because there is a single transistor on their output and these are called TTL output because output voltage here and here can be either ground or VDD in this one and ground or VCC in this one. These are most commonly used output types in ICs. Transistor outputs are called open collector or open drain based on the transistor type used on output. If the transistor on output is a BJT transistor, then the output is called open collector because collector terminal of the transistor is connected to output pin and it is not connected to anywhere else. Similarly, if the transistor on output is a FET transistor, then the output is called open drain because of similar reason. So, we consider transistor output and TTL output and we got the difference in their structure. But what is difference in their operation? Let's see. By activating a TTL output, no matter which one, a BJT TTL or a FET TTL, VCC or VDD voltage will appear on output and by deactivating it, zero or ground voltage will appear on output. On the other hand, by activating an open collector or open drain output, the output will be connected to ground or zero volt and by deactivating an open collector output, it will disconnect from ground and there would be no voltage on output. Believe it or not, the output will be left in the air. Think about it carefully. I'm not saying zero volt. There will be no voltage at all and this will bring us many advantages. Here we are going to learn about open collector advantages over ordinary TTL outputs. But before that, there is an important point I have to say. There are two types of open collector outputs and also there are two types of open drain outputs. Open collector outputs can be made by using NPN transistors or PMP transistors. NPN open collectors are more common though. If you look attentively to these diagrams, it is clear that 
PNP open collector connect output to VCC voltage when it is active and leave output in the air when it is inactive. This is a special type of open collector. We already considered NPN type open collector which connects output to ground when it is active and leave output in the air when it is inactive. We will concentrate on NPN open collector in the rest of this video because PNP type are rarely used. Also, there is a similar thing about open drain outputs. Open drain outputs can be made by using NMOS transistors or PMOS transistors. Similarly, NMOS open drains are more common. By looking at these diagrams, you can find out that PMOS uh, open drains connect output to VDD, uh, the source voltage, when it is active and leave output in the air when it is inactive. In this video, we will ignore PMOS open drains because it is rarely used. There is also another point here. NPN type open collectors and NMOS open drains are called sinking type outputs because they connect output to ground when they are active and PNP type open collectors and PMOS open drains are called sourcing type outputs because they connect output to source voltage when they are active and leave output in the air when they are inactive. Now it is time to see what is advantages of open collector outputs compared to ordinary TTL outputs. Advantage number one, drive a load directly. Usually open collector outputs can provide more current compared to ordinary TTL outputs. Even though there are exceptions, in most cases you can connect a load or at least a relay directly to open collector output and it will work fine. Advantage number two, drive a load with different voltage. It doesn't matter what voltage the load works with. Maybe the load works with a voltage higher than logic voltage like 12 volts or even lower voltage like 2 volt until you are driving the load through an open collector output. You ask me why? I'm gonna answer. When you are driving a load using open collector output, you have to connect the load, for example, a DC motor in this way. One of its terminals should be connected to its working voltage and its other terminal should be connected to open collector output. The open collector output will provide ground for the load. The working voltage can be more than logic voltage like this case. Here working voltage of this motor is 12 volt and logic voltage is 5 volt and in other cases it can be less than that. You may ask what is logic voltage? Logic voltage is the voltage that digital parts of the circuit like MCUs works with. So let's continue. Next item is similar. Advantage number three, compatibility. Open collector outputs are compatible with all logic levels and can be used as input for all of them. Let me give you an example to make it clear. Suppose that this MCU is operating on 5 volt and this one is operating on 3.3 volt. You can't directly connect a TTL output from this MCU to input of this one because when output of this MCU become active, it puts 5 volt on output and it will harm this one because maximum load voltage for this MCU is 3.3 volt. Let's suppose that output type here is open collector. Now we can pull up this point to 3.3 volt using this resistor, then it will work fine. Actually, open collector output made these MCUs compatible. Is it beautiful? Yes, it is. Last but not least item is wire ending. Advantage number four, wire ending or shared bus. It is because of the open collector output that we can safely connect multiple outputs together. Consider this situation. We need to connect multiple terminals together. These terminals can be either inputs or outputs. Here these two are outputs and this one is input. We need to send messages from these MCUs to this one. 
Let's suppose that these outputs are of TTL type. What will happen in case that this one puts digital 1 on output line and this one puts digital 0 on output line? Think about 5 volt here and 0 volt here without any resistor between them. Yes, a short circuit occurs and it will harm both outputs. But what about open collector or open drain output types? If I use open collector output type, a short circuit will never occur here. In worst case, data conflict maybe happens here, which is not much important and it can be fixed with software techniques. Why it is called wire ending? Because it acts like a digital AND gate. You may think of using digital AND gates in a stop open collector outputs to prevent short circuit. It is somehow true, but in most cases, external AND gates can't be used. You ask me why? I'm gonna answer. I have already told you maybe data conflict occurs here and we have to use software techniques to prevent data conflict. Usually these software techniques require reading this bus in order to prevent data conflict and if you use digital AND gates to prevent short circuit, you prevent data reading either and eventually you prevent these techniques from working properly, while open collector outputs do not not have this problem and are completely compatible with software techniques. I mean these MCUs write this bus but they sometimes read this bus to see what is going on here to decide when to write data, when not to write data, to prevent data conflict. You may ask if open collector outputs are so good then why not all outputs are made as open collector? because open collector outputs have some disadvantages beside their advantages. For example, these output types require external components. At least a pull-up resistor is required while TTL outputs doesn't require any external components. On the other hand, this pull-up resistor here consume energy and draw current when output is zero volt. Higher operating speeds require lower resistor value for faster pull-up which consumes even more power. In most cases, we use a resistor in kilo ohm range to reduce power dissipation but this also results in slow operation of these outputs. I2C protocol is one of well-known examples of open collector application in practice. I will talk more about I2C protocol in one of my next videos. So I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe for more.